Something weird has been happening in the solar system that's nearest to ours. Proxima Centauri is just four light years away, and scientists have been picking up some unusual signals from one of the system's planets, Proxima b. These strange anomalies dubbed artificial lights have been rattling the brightest minds in the space community, but what are they? And can this be an indication of intelligent life on the planet? Is there a civilization next door? Well, it's definitely a possibility. In late 2020, a signal was discovered from the direction of Proxima Centauri, our closest neighbor star. Named BLC-1, the signal is still being analyzed to ensure it isn't just an echo of our own civilization, which is typically what they usually turn out to be. So, why don't we just directly look at planets in Proxima Centauri and see if civilization is there? Well, from space, the most obvious sign somebody lives on Earth is the glow from the night side of our planet. Our cities emit light that escapes into the cosmos. The problem is that our current generation of telescopes is not powerful enough to see lights on distant worlds. But several researchers are testing the capabilities of the next generation of telescopes already on the drawing board. That's right, we're looking at you, James Webb Telescope. What were the findings? Yes, if advanced enough or glowy enough, we would be able to see if another civilization has the lights on at Proxima Centauri. The possibility of technosignatures at Alpha Centauri has a new study on the detectability of these artificial lights on Proxima Centauri b. From what we know, the planet is in the habitable zone roughly similar in mass to the Earth, and of course, it orbits the nearest star, making it a world we can hope to learn a great deal more about as new instruments, especially the James Webb Space Telescope. The new study also points to Louvoir, or Large UV Optical IR Surveyor, a multi-wavelength space-based observatory with a possible launch in 2035. Authors Elisa Tabor of Stanford University and Avi Loeb of Harvard point out that a tidally locked planet with a permanent night side would need artificial lighting to support a technological culture. Coincident for civilizations developing around neighboring stars are pretty unlikely, making this one of the longest of long shots. On the other hand, a civilization arising elsewhere could be detectable through its artifacts on the worlds it has chosen to study. There are several ways to tell alien technology exists on another planet. For example, we may be able to see the light of a distant world waver with a massive constellation of satellites. You know, the same stuff that's happening on Earth as well, with the increasing number of satellites that we push out into orbit. Atmospheric pollution may be detectable from nuclear conflict. Hmm, sound familiar? While these indications of technology could also be caused by natural phenomena like orbiting debris or a comet impact, Artificial illumination is distinct from the natural light of stars. Previously mentioned researchers Eliza Tabor and Avi Loeb took the web for a virtual alien light hunting test drive last year, but since it isn't fully functional as of yet, the results were a bit janky. The virtual JWST is trained on Proxima b, the one confirmed planet in the Proxima Centauri system that could presumably host a civilization. Located 4.25 light years from Earth, Proxima b is a rocky world in the habitable zone of the M class red dwarf star Proxima Centauri, that's just a mere 12% the mass of our Sun. Proxima b is heftier than us at about 1.6 Earth masses and 1.3 times our radius. It orbits Proxima Centauri in just 11.2 days at a distance of 7 million kilometers, only 5% of the distance at which Earth orbits the Sun. Tabor and Loeb scaled artificial illumination as a fraction of the solar illumination reflecting from the day side of our planet. 
0% on this scale would assume that the night side of the planet is completely dark. 100% means the night side of the planet is as equally bright as the day side, which also isn't a possibility. The type of light used by the hypothetical civilization on Proxima b is assumed to be similar to LEDs on Earth, which have distinct artificial characteristics. So, what have we found out so far? Well, if the artificial nightside illumination of Proxima b reaches 5% of the natural dayside illumination, the web could detect the artificial light within 85% certainty. If artificial illumination were to reach 9%, Webb's detection rate would rise to 95%. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. 5% illumination doesn't sound like much, right? Well, we are talking about the light from a star. As faint as Proxima Centauri is compared to our sun, which is about 20 times dimmer, that's almost like placing a firefly next to stadium lights. But even that much at a cosmic level is still a lot of light. By comparison, Earth's artificial illumination is only 0.001% of reflected stellar illumination. In other words, if Proxima b hosts a civilization as lit up as us, the web wouldn't be able to detect it. Those lights would need to be 500 times brighter. That scenario is plausible. Proxima b orbits so closely to its host star that it may be tidally locked as we've mentioned before, with one side of the planet always facing the star, while the other is in perpetual night. The civilization on a tidally locked planet will probably need to focus on its lighting infrastructure, and could use very bright orbital mirrors to reflect sunlight onto the night side of the planet which could be seen by our telescopes, but that's of course just a hypothesis. Tabor and Loeb's research indicates that other future telescopes such as Louvoir or Large UV Optical Infrared Surveyor may be even more capable than JWST at spotting the glow of a distant civilization. Just a few days after the researcher's publication, Thomas Beatty of the Department of Astronomy at the University of Tucson justified that with those numbers. Beatty reviewed both Louvoir as well as HABEX or Habitable Exoplanet Observatory to understand how these telescopes will detect city lights not only on Proxima b, but also on planets orbiting stars out to a distance of 30 parsecs or pc. One PC is about 3.26 light years. Both Louvoir and Habix have missions to catalog and directly image exoplanets that are scheduled to launch in 2035, so there's a long way to go before that. Beatty used virtual Louvoir and Habix observatories on several star systems with known worlds like Proxima b, as well as hypothetical Earth-like worlds orbiting G, K, and M-class stars. BD also scaled the percentage of the planetary surface which was urbanized. The more urbanization, the brighter the planet's night side. The type of artificial illumination in this model simulates the most common lights on Earth, high-pressure sodium streetlights reflecting off concrete surfaces which also feature a spectrum distinguishable from natural starlight. So the variables are a distance from Earth, b the planet's level of urbanization, and c the type of star the planet is orbiting. In each scenario, the virtual scopes are imaging planets for a minimum of 100 hours to collect enough light streaming through the void to resolve the target. The Earth's surface is only about 0.05% urbanized. Our telescopes wouldn't be able to see us if they were peering from Proxima Centauri. A greater percentage of urbanization could help us see a distant civilization more clearly, like say 100%. But what exactly is 100% urbanization? That's something called an ecumenopolis. An ecumenopolis is a city planet, a world where the entire surface is covered in one giant city. I know, I know, it sounds super science fiction. 
The best part, though, is that there are already several examples that exist, like the Republic-slash-Empire capital of Coruscant in Star Wars, or the Ecumenopolis planet type in the space strategy video game Stellaris. But more than a nerdy sci-fi concept, it's probable that an advanced civilization could completely encase their world in an unending urban landscape. So, how visible would that world be? Beattie modeled the results and found that future telescopes would be capable of detecting Ecumenopolis worlds around 82 stars near the Sun. That's a lot of space. This means if somebody out there is shining that brightly, we may be able to see them in the coming decade. Fingers crossed on that one. We aren't done yet, though. Our super researcher Beatty has more in store. Her work demonstrates that close-ranged red dwarf stars provide the best chance for detecting urban worlds, meaning Proxima b is currently the prime target. Detecting an Ecumenopolis version of Proxima b would be easy for next-generation telescopes. We could detect just 0.5% urbanization on the planet, which is still 10 times more than Earth's present urbanization. Here's the thing, though. The current city growth rates put Earth at 0.5% within the next 100 years, which literally is a blink in cosmic time. If an alien civilization does exist, it might have already reached this level of urbanization assuming that they are long-lived. So, we don't actually know that technological civilizations are long-lived. That's one of the reasons why we do SETI or Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Finding someone else shining in the void means there's more hope that we can keep the lights on too. Who knows, those lights might just be an alien beacon asking for help. We'll get to know sooner or later, but we'll keep our eyes peeled. So, what do you think is causing those lights on Proxima b? And how early do you think the web and other future telescopes will provide evidence? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching Space Rumor.